Thank you guys for stopping by. I'm Vortical Line 75, and today we're doing an interview with Tina Eltadonna, the director of marketing over at ZipChair. It's been a great relationship we've had with them for the past year now. We are bringing you this interview to talk about sponsorships, esports, have a chance to get to know them as well. Be sure to check out the description below. Drop a comment if you have any suggestions, comments, or anything you'd like to add to this. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. Have a great day and enjoy the video. Um, but I've worked for a variety of different um, companies from the service industry to uh, product fields. So I've been at Dream Seat and ZipShare now for two and a half years, and I absolutely love it. I love the people. I love the product. I think we, everyone here is an amazing, um, they're all amazing. The company's amazing. And um, I guess <laughs> that's it. And I'm happy to be, you know, here with you guys. So, so what made you choose to go into marketing? So, um, you know, like I always had a very creative side and I was always very analytical. So I, you know, going through college like everyone else, we I think we all go through the the basic. Oh, I want to be a teacher. Oh, I want to do this, and none of that really kind of sparked it for me. So I, you know, I was always involved in the creative writing classes um, and kind of advertising communication, and it just kind of fell into my lap. And because I was extremely analytical, uh, my first job out of college was analyzing. Um, all data and it was super interesting because it wasn't a call center where it was cold calls. These were all people that belonged to an organization or used a particular service. So I was helping to create surveys. I was helping to analyze the data that came in from their responses. Um, and also what really sparked it for me was um, getting the opportunity to help large companies launch new brands and new products and get feedback. So helping to design those surveys and then using their data to drive their activities afterwards. Wonderful. So about where you're working now, I've noticed that the branding for ZipChair products also references DreamSeat. What's the relationship between you guys? Sure. So DreamSeat is our parent company. Um, DreamSeat is a B2B business um, that started it all. ZipChair was born out of DreamSeat because DreamSeat products are seen and used throughout collegiate stadiums, professional sports in the actual stadium arena in the locker rooms, in front offices, back offices. So typically when people are watching, you know, an interview of players in a locker room, you'll see the dream seat or zip chair products in the locker room, like the sofas, the chairs. So we started getting inquiries from consumers asking, hey, where can I get that? Even if it was just on social. So it, when somebody wants something, if we can go out and get the licensing for it and provide it to the consumer we will and that's how zipchair was formed wonderful yeah i've seen a lot on linkedin of some of the launches they've done and everything even with all this i've seen some great things coming out of it yeah yeah it's exciting yep <laughs> yeah we're in i want to say about close to all professional sports we're in about 90 percent of all of their facilities in some aspect and then in almost every major university um, wow. in some fashion, they have something of our product. Wow. That, I didn't realize it was that much. That's good stuff. I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that moves on to the next thing. I know you guys are deeply rooted in the sports world. Uh, what prompted the transition, transition into gaming? So a few years ago, the, uh, it, it actually started with regular with professional sports traditional I should say they a few of the NBA teams started kind of their NBA 2k uh, leagues so and they had asked us with player you know teams that we already worked with had asked us hey do you have anything that we could use as a gaming chair so uh, at the time the racing style chairs 
were starting to come out, but they weren't everywhere yet. So, and a lot of people still liked that smaller task chair. So because of the logo system that we have on the chair, we were able to embroider the logo for that particular NBA 2K team and get the players' chairs. We did this for a few of them, and that kind of sparked the need in people and the request for the um, racing style chair, which we went out and developed. And that ended up forming our you know, zip chair gaming and you know, just getting us into that whole esports world. Wonderful. Uh, so, obviously, a little bit of change with things with COVID this year. So, how's that uh, changed your initiatives and priorities? Actually, it fared maybe better than we all thought for us here. And professional sports, while we all stopped playing, um, you know, fans will always be fans. But esports, um, even though I think there was a, a shift among the professional leagues to attempt to bring the fans into stadiums and, and have that kind of atmosphere, I think they were able to go back to their roots with COVID and do everything virtually. And it really worked out well for us. We were able to engage with our fans and fans of these leagues. And, I guess more traditional manner. So they, um, our product sales had increased and we saw a lot more interaction in um, our social channels and people asking us questions. And it also gave us the ability to be a lot closer to them. So I think going, COVID really allowed us to kind of become a little bit closer and spend a lot more time online in these spaces than we previously did. Yeah. I mean, that's been a big thing with the gaming world anyway, so that's wonderful. Yes, there have been game releases that have been slowed down and everything like that, but overall, uh, I think the gaming world has found a way to keep going amidst everything right now. Yes. Which is good. It's Everyone... good it's... Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and in you know, going back to kind of what they were founded on and what had made them successful, it kept their their followers, and there was really no lack. And I think they also found new followers and new viewership because people were so just, what am I going to watch? You know, there was nothing. There was no sports whatsoever, and this gave them a bit of that competition. So I it right. seems like the sports world maybe gains a lot more than what other people ended up losing. I think it's been a little strange, too, because it was about two months ago. Hollywood hasn't been producing as much either. So people are really looking for different forms of entertainment because it's been more of the same. So there's been a lot of new people coming into the industry. Yeah, that's so true. Really yeah. film anything. <laughs> right. So how about for you? What's been the most difficult moment in your career? Oh, overall? Wow. Um, I would say riding all of the highs and lows. So you know, I was, um, I, I had just graduated uh, college after two years after 9-11. So, you know, the, the job industry was not um, stable. And then, of course, the major crash of 08, I was, you know, working at a, I was the marketing director for a, a large CPA firm. And that was definitely hard because that hit the financial sector super hard. It was really just weathering all of these storms. And, and this is just another, another example of, you know, how things happen with COVID. And I think all three of those moments, um, they were devastating in their own right, affected everybody differently, but, even though they were super difficult, they allowed me to almost have to transition and have to change different tactics and change the way we reach either the consumer or whoever we're targeting. So I think all of those moments were super difficult for me and for everybody else. Uh, 
I I actually was in New York when I lived there. It was post Hurricane Sandy, and I was all along the Hudson River and everything. And I was watching nine locations for when I was working management and everything. Um, that was a very difficult time. Uh, a lot of people had lost homes and everything, and we were amidst everything being rebuilt right at that moment. Uh, and I had just transferred out there, like living in a hotel for eight months out in New York. And uh, it was an awesome thing getting to be part of that rebuild and all that. But at the same time, it was uh, hit me right in the feels personally, uh, for sure. Yeah. Devastating what it does, what all this destruction does. And it's so rewarding when we get to come out of it. You know what it could be in a few months. It could be two years from now where we're looking back and trying to remember exactly how bad and devastating it was. You know, so I feel like that's always a testament to ourselves, to the companies we work for. If we can come out of something that was very difficult and a few years later or however long later, not have to kind of remember how bad it actually was. Right. It seems a little surreal looking back at it almost. Yeah, exactly. Oh. On a brighter note, what's in store for the future of Zipchair? So, um, it's very, very hush hush, but we do have a new product coming out. Um, of course, because of COVID, uh, everything got delayed slightly but it will be out in time for the holidays. We'll be doing some pre-orders probably coming up, um, most likely October-ish, and we'll be kind of doing some sneak peeks and you know some special launch stuff soon. Nice. So it's very exciting. It is something that is going to revolutionize the market. Um, are features that we have that nobody has ever done in, in any aspect of seeding. We're very excited about that. That's great news. So you're currently working with Overwatch League. Previously you worked with Call of Duty League. Are there any other plans in the works that you can share about anything related to that? Um. So we have few um, other leagues that we, or teams, I should say, that we do work with, um, like Team Envy, uh, Team Misfits. So as of right now, um, with the, of course, the status of the industry, we don't have anything new currently in the works, um, but we are, of course, always interested in talking to teams, to leagues, um, and you know, our, our logo system is so I think what draws people in because they can just swap a logo in and out and change it as they need to. So that's always a benefit for us and for any league that we partner with. But uh, as of right now, those are the leagues that we're working with and that's pretty much it for now. Fair. With you guys coming from the sports and business sectors, uh, how did this influence your, your vision for the chairs being produced in the gaming industry? So a lot of what we rely on are player like impact and player input. So whether it's a physical conversation with actual professional players, collegiate players, um, even just some of our staff members who are big, you know, gamers on their recreational time, uh, we always want people's input. We like able to take uh, chairs home when we were testing out um, the different versions of our newest product. Um, it happened to be during COVID. So we had a few of the chairs um, sent to some of our staff members' homes who sit long hours, they do game, uh, and they were able to test it out, provided a ton of feedback. Um, we did send a lot of I guess information back and forth to professional players while we were coming up with the chair and before we even went into production with it to get features that people had to have, what they hated about other gaming chairs, what would be an unbelievable feature for them. And all of that input went into making this product as well as our other chairs. Wonderful. 
So I can speak from a personal account on this. Like the reason I asked that question was really that the durability of the chairs compared to most gaming chairs I've sat in has been just phenomenal. They've lasted everything. Like that's been the biggest feature is I can tell they were built for that reason with that in mind more so than just the sake of a sleek gaming chair just for looks and that was it. Yeah, we really try to make them, all of our products last. And that's one thing um, we always say it and I, I'm not sure people really understand what it means, but our furniture is commercial grade, which it's made first and foremost for the commercial market. So we always like to say it's over designed for the consumer. So when you think about it, the all of our products were made for pretty much professional athletes to be sitting in. And uh, when you go into like an NFL film room, those chairs that are in there, there are, you know, 350 pound linemen, you know, sitting in these chairs for years and they hold up well um, and they're meant to last. And so when anybody buys one of our products off Zip Chair, including the gaming chair, they were over designed to last, to take that, you know, abuse. Um, you know, we always say like, you know, it's, it's meant to take people's celebrations, you know, so, you know, get excited, bounce around in it. And, you know, it's meant for that. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and the, and the other side of it too, the reason I said business sector is like you have GM and some others as well. So it's really chairs that are being used a lot. Yes. And if it's, if it's good enough for, you know, professional athletes, um, they're made to last. Like we don't, nobody wants to, whether you're a business or whether you're an individual, you don't want to be buying an office chair or a conference table over and over and over again. You might as well have spent a little bit more money and gotten something that can last, you know, five, 10, 15 years. Right. So we know a lot of brand sponsors, entities, uh, all in the gaming world are heavily in the weeds with the community. What are you guys doing to immerse yourselves completely in the industry? So we, because we are, um, we try and stick with a small group of sponsors and groups that we do partner with, like um, your group. It gives us the ability by not spreading us too thin and being able to be a little bit more hyper-focused we're able to figure out exactly what the needs of that community and those fans are and target exactly that and work with you guys to get our message as well as effectively communicate your message. Um, we have been getting a lot more active in certain channels of our sponsors, uh, the people we sponsor to kind of interact more with their fans and really just ask honest questions and see what they're looking for, what they like, and just kind of communicate with them and not, you know, we're not always out there to be selling where you know, we want to really know what they think and we want to interact with them and watch what they're watching and talk about their players. And, you know, if it's one of our call of duty teams or say the, um, or one of the, our Florida team, um, you know, we're able to interact with the fans and discuss exactly what's going on in the game and what the players are doing, as well as, you know, just general gaming stuff. So that, that's really what we try to do. We, we really want to be focused with what the consumer is interested in, and, and we're fans. So in, in the end, you know, we're fans of regular sports. We're fans of... Uh, all different types of video games. Everybody in my office has a different strength, has a different um, love of a different game. So it all works out well. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. oh, that, that's really where that was spawned from. So, I mean, the moments in gaming that I can really speak to as well is we were playing Resident Evil 2. The voice actor for Claire shows up in channel and just chills with us for hours. Like those moments make a world of difference just in it. And it's not just about selling it. It's showing truly passion behind what you're doing and everything of that sort. So yeah. that's phenomenal. Exactly. Yeah, my, our uh, creative director, Tyler, he all the time, he pops in, you know, he loves just hanging out with people and, and talking and 
post, whether it's under his personal account or whether it is under, you know, our corporate account. He just likes to be involved and sometimes, you know, he's in an entire chat for hours and, you know, watching someone stream, never even mentions the chair once, just there to be a part of the community. Wonderful. So you did already kind of answer this, but uh, how else do you interact directly with the sponsor teams you represent? I know there's um, the actual team side there, uh, and there are some larger teams that you represent also. Yes. Yeah, so when, of course, pre-COVID, we were involved in their online, their actual physical events. We would have a presence there. We would have um, kind of products. You would have um, set up kind of like experiences. So they could, whether it was um, kind of making fan signs, um, and we had all the, the sign kits available so they could kind of make something. And of course, there was a level of interaction there. If they took a photo of them with the sign and used certain hashtags, they would be entered to win a gaming chair. So we did that. We did um, just a few other kind of interactive events um, with the fans. We helped uh, the Florida Misfits. They did during the Super Bowl. They actually had a their Call of Duty team. They had an activation at the Super Bowl where players, where some of the professional players and then some of the NFL players and regular fans could come and actually play and sit in the chairs and hang out and you know we donated all the chairs and we helped out uh, with, with that part of it and just to kind of create that fun environment and you know let the fans know that hey we're here and we support our sponsors and we support the game and we all of that wonderful yeah, I didn't hear about anything with the uh, professional teams and all that. That that's cool to hear because I know like Detroit, they do uh, NBA two K stuff as well. Quite a, well, they were quite a bit, uh, and they were very immersed with the community because there's been a lot of the former players that are still in the Detroit area that really try to help that community. So that is great to hear all the way around. Yeah, definitely, and it it does it. I think it brings when they have it within their own community and they are able to have events um more so when the events are free for the community to come and participate it, it gives that sense of community and allows people to feel welcome and get to know maybe some people even professional gamers that they view as maybe a little bit more untouchable and they see that they're a real person that they have a real interest just like them and we want to be a part of that oh yeah that is true. People forget that from time to time. It's, uh, it's a little outside the realm of reality. Yeah. Exactly. So transition into anyone growing in the industry, live streaming or esports, what would you say are the key components you're looking for when sponsoring or working with an applicant? Oh, this is tough for us. Um, we are very picky as to who we choose to partner with. Um, our biggest goal is that it has to be meaningful for the both of us. So as us being, us sponsoring someone and we need to have mutual interest. I, it can't be one-sided. Stats, you know, uh, stream, you know, volume, uh, followers, all of that, while it's super important, somebody's reach, it's also somebody's engagement that matters a lot to us. I want to focus on people that are have a, a large community of followers that are engaged with them and that trust what they have to say. And of course, nowadays with um, just who we all have to be careful who we partner with. I need to make sure, you know, the team or the streamer or the um, any the influencer is in, you know, abides by kind of what we feel uh, represents you know, the world and, and isn't controversial, just like they need to make sure that they're the same. So with, with all of that going on, you know, the last thing you want to do is be caught up in any type of controversy. Um, 
for who you select to partner with. So we are very selective. I, I we do love working with people, even if it's just on a one-off thing where we're maybe helping somebody to get started, or we're providing them with a product or a bunch of different, um, maybe some marketing assets. And we like to make sure things are organic. I don't like to force people to see something because then it's not truthful and it's not honest. And their fans always know when something comes directly from them versus it being something that was scripted. So we really don't want our influencers or anyone we partner with to say something that's not uniquely them because everyone has their own way of phrasing things. There. Yeah. And then a lot of that came from not only for people that are coming up that are looking for these kind of things that want answers to this from the other side of it, but also from the sake of there's a lot going on in the industry right now with Mixer shutting down. Discord just mm -hmm. announced they're pulling partnerships from people that don't have the engagement. That just came out yesterday, two days ago. Um, and then the dark side of it, of all of the sexual harassment and sexual assault issues in the industry. I mean, it, it's been hit pretty crazy. And I think a lot more people that are just in the industry that are a little, I guess, younger really weren't expecting these things to happen. Whereas I approached it, I said, this happened in Hollywood. This happened in like these, these things happened in retail when a bunch of women started joining the market in the eighties, nineties, when women really joined the workforce. And we saw all these things come to light in every industry. And it's now just hitting where there's normalization of the business side of streaming and gaming and everything like that. So now it's all coming to light. Right. So yeah. no, and, and both sides, that's why I said both sides have to protect each other. You know, you we each have our own brand that we need to protect and everybody's values need to completely align and we need to be cognizant of all of our actions. Right. I, I just feel for all these businesses because they I, I feel like everyone has to do an excessive amount of homework now on anyone that they choose to work with because there's a lot that can come with it that's for sure that's for sure that's true but you know what it's worth it because when you find the right partner i mean who would have thought that what it's been almost a year now that we've been working with you guys and who would have thought that you know from a, a simple you know, application that it would have branched into this type of relationship. And, you know, we love working with you guys and we've gotten great feedback. So, you know, when, when things like this come to fruition, it makes all of that work that we put in both sides worth it. Right. And, and that's what I mean. This has been fun on this side of it because we get to push the needle doing things a little differently with you guys as well. And, Bring something a little from the other side of the fence because uh, I know a lot of it is just viewed on that esports side, and we kind of live on the other side of the fence as well. So, yeah. So, I, I guess we already answered the next question as well. Uh, So when you are looking at applications for sponsorship, what's that one thing that bumps someone up that you're saying, okay, we're really going to look at this person? I think their willingness to, one, the fact that they, if they researched kind of who we are and what we've done, if they can make reference to that, that always goes a long way. Um, and two, their ability to think outside the box. Most people will just write something super generic about, hey, I have this many followers and I, you know, can do this kind of post. If somebody goes the extra mile and actually puts in some thought over what they're willing to do for to partner with us, that definitely makes anybody stand out more. And that's fair. I like a job interview, you know, yeah. the person that puts their photo on their, you know, on their resume or, you know, comes in with a, some sort of, whether it's a sales plan or whether it's a marketing plan, you know, those are always the people that impress you the most. Right. So you're saying it's because I sprayed the application with perfume then that it... Right. Right. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, this is probably my favorite question to ask right here is, uh, cool. tell me about the one that got away. So that moment that... 
you were really seeking someone out to sponsor that kind of thing. And they either left for another company. You guys sat on it too long, whatever the case may be that one that got away. Hmm. So I don't know if it actually has to do with sponsorship, but, um, the, it's more of a, a, a product licensing thing that I'll say is the one that got away. And, um, that's the NFL. We have been actively seeking the NFL license for quite some time. Um, you know, anybody that is a fan of the NFL is, um, or even playing Madden or any of those games, we have tons of fans in that space. And the NFL is a tough nut to crack. So that's definitely the one that got away. We're still actively working on it. Um, and we're not taking no for an answer. But um, that's definitely the one I think that stings the most. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. And I just like to ask that. I I just like to ask that because uh, everyone has that story in some capacity. Uh, And I I think that's a driving force for a lot of businesses, professionals, that kind of thing, is there's always that one there. Yeah, definitely. And that's that's what it is. I mean, most most gamers and, and streamers and um, even professional athletes, you know, there. If if we walked away, it was most times it was a mutual thing. We just, you know, we just knew that it wasn't the right time or the moment wasn't there. But the NFL is the one that stinks. Yeah, that's fair. I I could see that. <laughs> So on to the more personal side of it here on the site, you guys have favorite quote for everyone that's on there. Here's as many life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up from Thomas Edison. What was the defining moment in your career or life that made this quote resonate with you? I think it's everything. So as a, as a creative writer, um, you know, I've stopped and started so many different between, uh, you know, poems, stories, um, you know, novels over and over and over again. And when I was in college, um, there was a poem that I was writing for one of my uh, more advanced creative writing classes. And I happened to just stop. I, I was done. I was finished editing it. I couldn't figure out where I needed to go with this. It just wasn't working for me. And I just kind of like tucked it in the back of one of my books. And I had a meeting with one of my professors and it just happened to, as I was fumbling through looking for stuff, it just happened to come out. And he was like, what's that one? And I was like, ah, it's just, it's not working. And he read it and he loved it. I, he submitted it to one, one of the publications at my university and it was published as is. No edits, no changes. Everybody loved it. It actually won um, a, a small kind of, not award, but like a, a little acknowledgement. Um, it, because of that, I was invited to do a few readings for some of groups on campus for some of the um, smaller, like kind of 101 type classes where the students had to reflect and write back on all of the people that book kind of read that night. And I'll never forget the next day, my professor told me that, or two days later, um, that all of the people in his class, the number one person that they commented on was me and my writing and was that particular poem. And it was the poem that I gave up on. So I think it resonates perfectly because, you know, I was giving up on that and I deem that as a failure and it turned out not to be. And if I, if that moment wouldn't have happened, I would have never experienced that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a good moment right there. Right. So, you know, lesson is don't give up and even when you think something's not working, let someone else take a look at it because, you know, maybe there is a nugget of gold in there. Right. <laughs> so what was your favorite moment at a convention or trade show? Oh, 
God, so I have done so many of these for years and years. And um, now having done, God, I was doing probably about 20 a year from start to finish by myself for about 10 years. So it, it takes a lot, of, lot out on you. Um, but one of my favorite moments, um, and it really spreads across anyone I go to, has to do with kind of the tchotchkes and the giveaways. Um, people are hysterical with them. And if I never see another tchotchke again in my life at a trade show, I'm one of those people that I'll never take one. I walk right past. I don't care how cool it is. I just can't. <laughs> but people are hysterical. I mean, I've heard everything from, you know, oh, I collect pens, and that's why they need to take 30 of them. Um, <laughs> you know, or, oh, my, gran my grandkid loves bags and wants to take, you know, 15 plastic bags. Like, your grandkid doesn't love pens. You don't, or bags. You don't collect pens. You, you're just a hoarder. It's okay. Just admit it. Like, I'm cool right. with it. Just, just be honest. So I think that's the best part of conventions is, you know, watching people meet, of course, meeting people, but hearing what everybody wants to say so they could have just one more of the free pen. Right. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> so here you go. Waffles or pancakes and why? So, waffles, but only for dessert and with chocolate ice cream. And pancakes, but only for dinner and with tons of butter on them. Okay, that's fair. The I are that waffles are perfect because you can put Nutella in all of the pockets and then put syrup on it as well and powdered sugar. <laughs> oh, see, but that's what I like about the chocolate ice cream being on it because it you can actually, if you let the ice cream sit out for just a little bit so it gets soft, you can spread it, get it in all the nooks on the waffle, and then you can like layer the waffles and then you can eat it like a sandwich. Okay, that sounds amazing. So an extra large, uh, like, Ice cream cookie, basically. Sandwich. Exactly. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. And now you're going to try it tonight. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what's your favorite game of all time? Uh, all right, so I am one of those, as time went on, um, Games kind of got a little bit too complicated for me, and I found that I need to stick with what I'm good at, and that is Super Mario Brothers 2 as the princess. Okay, so you say two. I I didn't know at all. I wasn't expecting that answer. I played two the day it came out. Like I have a huge family memory of playing Mario Two. We played start to finish all the way through. That was like one amazing moment in my childhood with my uncle with my father like family was all there and we played it the day it came out um, love it yep love Absolutely. it love it and everybody i say that to can't because like i find most people can't stand that game i just i'm like well, are you crazy it's amazing yeah it, it was so well done for its time and everything and it was completely different than all the others yes now, don't get me wrong i loved mario 3 as well but mm-hmm for sure. And yes, games have gotten very complex now. Um, I have. I remember, I mean, I used to play Bond all the time. And I don't even remember what year it was, but it came out and I, I, I couldn't, like, I, I couldn't get the gun. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I was, I was, that's when I realized, okay, all right, this has definitely passed you by. <laughs> stay, stay, stay in 64 bit. You're good there. Right. <laughs> Uh, no, I actually have a lot of friends and everything that just do retro games. There's a huge, like, it, people still love it. It's always there. Oh. Um, I actually just got connectors and everything so I can hook up for streaming for retro games and everything because I absolutely have a passion for it. Um, but yeah, yeah it's so I kind of realized how complex games got when someone uh, gifted me the game Elite Dangerous. Uh, and don't ever go near that game. I, I won't. <laughs> it, it's a space game. That basically is a full on real sim of flying a spacecraft that has 55 base command buttons that you can use right out of the start. 
Wow. It took me two hours to land a spaceship. I, I could see that. <laughs> me and my husband played um, a few years ago when I think it probably was like 2008, 2009, um, when I think it was called Super Mario Paper. Oh, Paper Mario, out. yeah. Paper Mario, yes. Let me tell you. I'm embarrassed to say it. He played. I had the book and I had the computer because we could not figure out how to do anything. And I mean, I'm, you know, reading everything. I'm walking him through level by level, looking up cheats, looking up just how to do anything. We finished the game, but it took us probably two and a half months. Oh, wow. So I don't know if you've seen it, but there is uh, Mario Maker 2 just came out for the Switch. Uh, what was it? Six months ago, probably. Okay. And that is essentially a player made set of levels. Like it has its own levels for it, but you can also create your own levels as well in the tune of like Mario 1, 2, 3 styling. So Ooh. you can go through the levels that are created by players. That's cool. So it's more of like an infinite level type of a Mario game. Uh, so it, it's fun. Some of the levels are literally like you have to jump on a turtle shell over and over throughout the whole level, and there's no ground at all. Uh, okay. So people make them a little crazy, but... <laughs> That's like um, my husband teaches STEM. So one of the things that, you know, he, he introduces to his kids is called Bloxels and we have more fun than I think the kids do with it because you're basically building your own video game. Yep. That was the one that you had mentioned to me in the past as well for my daughter. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. It's awesome. I mean, we, we just keep building. I mean, we're never done building a game because we're constantly working on the background and on, you know, our characters, making them better and giving them powers and different colors and all of that. But it's super fun. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Uh, and actually, when you told me about that, I was playing a game called Screeps, which is basically teaching people basic coding as well. Like, it's actually, I mean, it's very pixelated and everything, but it's just basic coding to allow it to do anything. So you have to code into it the code to get it to work. Yeah. So important now. So important now. Yep. What games are you playing currently? Um, I'm a big mobile player right now. Um, so I love uh, Family Guy Quest for Things. I love basic card games, Solitaire. You play that? Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's so silly, but I love it. I can't stop. Um, I like, I love Solitaire. Um, I play, God, the Gardenscapes game. Anything where I'm, I feel like I'm making puzzles. Um, I wish they would come out with Roller Coaster Tycoon for mobile, but because um, that is, I am amazing at that game. And I had the original <laughs> of that on PC. Me too. Loved I, it. Loved I've it. found myself for mobile doing just like word games and like enhanced memory games and stuff yeah. like that. Me too. So it's super easy. Wonderful. Yeah, but I wish they'd come out with. Roller Coaster Tycoon again. Oh. Hey, I forgot all about that. Good one. I had so many. I would beat every level and was so good at earning money. Right. I mean, I, I live close enough to Cedar Point. Like, I, I grew up on the huge roller coaster places here and absolutely love it. I don't know if you've been to Cedar Point or not. I never have. I never made it there. And I mean, I went to school in West Virginia, so, um, but I never made it over to that part of it. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing else there whatsoever. It's in the, you know, part of Ohio and pass through the wild lands of Pennsylvania to get there. So you're passing by just forest and nothing, but yeah, wonderful. I absolutely appreciate you doing this today, by the way. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I, I'm happy to. Happy to support you guys and help out. Absolutely. And uh, I, I mean, I suppose uh, congratulations on your anniversary as well are in order. 
Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Married yeah. 10 years next. The four, 14th. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. I know. I can't believe it. We haven't killed each other yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. That what is it? It's August right now. Yeah. A couple more months. It'll be 17 years. Hey, yeah. look at that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> A little while we just stay in other rooms and that's why we keep a divider between us while we're streaming uh yeah. now i always tell them anyway i'm like Dah. you know what we're getting old nobody's buying what we're selling it's good <laughs> right <laughs> exactly we're stuck with each other now yep yeah did you have any no. other questions for me um no i mean i don't think so Wonderful. All right. Yeah. Thank you again for doing this. You're welcome. I hope everyone, you know, enjoys this and has a great time at the event. <laughs> I hope somebody good wins a gaming chair. Really needs it. Oh, I know a couple of the past winners have been super excited about it as well. And um, it's great. And it's so great to see, you know, even when they just post a photo. Yep. It's just, just excellent. You know, and that's, that's what makes all this worthwhile is the people that, you know, really need it, that probably would never be able to afford something like that. And it's just great to be able to, you know, give back and let someone, you know, have something that makes them feel like they're part of that professional community. Oh, exactly. Mm -hmm.